Dick Emery, the man who sparked peals of laughter across Britain, is a name synonymous with classic comedy. In this video, we'll take a look at his life, career, and his death, unearthing facets of his personal life that remained obscured during his life. Dick Emery's Storied Career Richard Gilbert Emery, more commonly known as Dick Emery, was born February 19, 1915, in Bloomsbury, London. Born to the comedy double act Callan and Emery, he was first introduced to show business at age three weeks, which set the scene for his later career in entertainment. When his parents eventually split up, he chose to live with his mother, leaving his early show business exposure behind. He tried his hand at several jobs before committing to the stage, including mechanic, office boy, farmhand, and driving instructor. During World War II, he was enlisted in the RAF, but family troubles led him back to London. This marked the beginning of his foray into the world of entertainment as he joined the chorus line of The Merry Widow at the Majestic Theatre. His career really took off in the 50s when he began broadcasting on radio. He made several appearances on popular programs like Worker's Playtime and The Goon Show. In 1963, he scored an exclusive contract with BBC, which led to the long-running The Dick Emery Show, spanning 18 series and 166 episodes between 1963 and 1981. He was known for his versatility, dressing up as various characters for his roles. His film career included playing in The Case of the Muckanese Battlehorn and providing voices for multiple characters in The Beatles' Yellow Submarine. He recorded several novelty records, notably If You Love Her, which peaked at number 32 in 1969. He made occasional switches to ITV, but inevitably returned to the BBC. In the later part of his career, he ventured into a new format of comedy thrillers under Emery Presents, including his new character, Jewish private detective Bernie Weinstock. His personal life was a tumultuous one. He was married five times and was known for numerous affairs. Despite his popularity and successful career, he suffered from stage fright and low self-esteem, leading him to try psychoanalysis, hypnosis, and sedatives to try to cope. Emery had a lifelong love for flying, fast cars, and motorcycles outside of show business. In 1961, he got his pilot's license. He was also a keen maker of scale models and served as the president of the Airfix Modelers Club. His health began to decline in December of 1982, when he was admitted into a London hospital for severe chest pains. He passed away from cardiorespiratory failure January 2, 1983, at age 67. Eliza's Revelations In an article published by the Daily Mail in 2014, his daughter Eliza provided a deeply candid insight into her relationship with her famous father. One of the most significant revelations concerned her father's character and their relationship. She described him as a difficult man who was both domineering and critical, painting a stark picture that contradicted his affable public persona. Eliza was quoted as saying, He wanted perfection and often demanded it. It could be relentless and grueling. The impact of her father's personality extended beyond his direct actions, seeping into her overall perception of herself and her work. She confessed to having a long-standing struggle with imposter syndrome. Despite her success, Eliza frequently felt like she was never good enough, echoing the constant need for perfection her father had instilled in her. Eliza's upbringing, characterized by a mix of public and homeschooling, coupled with her father's fame, also shaped her in unique ways. She mentioned that this environment was a double-edged sword, giving her unique perspectives and experiences, but also leading to a feeling of isolation and pressure. Talking about her burnout experiences, Eliza revealed, I found myself constantly on the edge and one day it was too much. She explained that the enormous pressure she felt resulted in a need to step back, reassess, and prioritize her mental health. Before Dick Emery, the womanizer. In the same interview, Eliza delved into further details about her father's less admirable qualities, particularly highlighting his reputation as a womanizer. She candidly described her father as having a proclivity for dalliances, with a continuous stream of women entering and exiting their lives. She said, There was always a new woman at the dinner table, a stranger, who was suddenly part of our lives and then just as quickly gone. This recurring pattern didn't just influence Emery's image, but also contributed to the instability of Eliza's childhood, adding another layer of complexity to her upbringing. 
Beyond his womanizing ways, Eliza also brought up other unsavory elements of Emery's character. She mentioned his penchant for excessive drinking, which often led to unpredictable behavior. This volatility exacerbated the tension in their home and deepened the emotional chasm between father and daughter. Emery was also described as a man obsessed with maintaining his public image. This obsession, according to Eliza, often translated into a lack of genuine connection or warmth in their private interactions. She noted, he could be charming and charismatic to the world, but behind closed doors it was a different story. Dick's legacy lives on. Despite the complexity of his personal life, particularly the challenging relationship with his daughter Eliza, the indelible mark that Dick Emery left on British culture can't be understated. His on-screen performances and the shows he contributed to have become quintessential elements of British television history. The Dick Emery Show, for example, entertained audiences for nearly two decades. Emery's ability to create, embody, and bring to life a multitude of characters resulted in a form of comedy that was both unique and trailblazing for its time. His adaptability not only showcased his individual talents, but also set a high standard for sketch comedy. Emery's contributions extended beyond his self-titled TV series, his work on radio programs like Workers' Playtime and The Goon Show, and his collaborations with other notable personalities like Michael Benton demonstrated his extensive influence within the industry. Even his brief forays into film, such as his vocal work in The Beatles' Yellow Submarine, are a testament to the diversity of his skills and the breadth of his impact. Emery's unique comedic style and his ability to create memorable characters have continued to influence comedians and entertain audiences long after his passing. So, while Emery's off-screen persona may have been fraught with personal failings and complexities, it's undeniable that his professional legacy has left a deep impression on British culture. His body of work continues to be celebrated, not only for its entertainment value, but also for its pivotal role in the evolution of British comedy. His successes serve as a reminder of the remarkable talent that existed alongside the challenging aspects of his personal life. His life serves as a striking example of the contrast that can exist between a public persona and a private life. As we've explored, his influential career left an enduring mark on British culture, even as his personal life, particularly his relationship with his daughter Eliza, was characterized by complexity and challenges. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you grow up watching Emery's shows? How do these revelations about his personal life impact your perception of him and his work? And how do you reconcile the public figure with the private individual? Let us know in the comments section below.